Platinum Classic is brought to you by Reebok. Fade into greatness. By Defiance Fuel. Supercharge your performance. And by Rogue. Final event of the day for the individuals here at the Mayhem Classic in Cookville, Tennessee. Thank you for being with us on this wonderful Saturday afternoon as we close out the second day of competition. Sean Woodland alongside Tommy Marquez and Roy McKernan is on the competition floor. And we just saw this play out with the men. Same event for the women, except the dumbbells are lighter, as is the sandbag. Yeah, 150-foot walking lunge carrying two dumbbells. 50-foot increments for those lunge before they turn around. 30 sandbag cleans, they have to break it up into sets of 10 where they have to move the sandbag, and then the same walking lunge set on their way back. Aggressive time cap, as we saw for the men. Heat assignments for lane number one, and Amanda Hardman, or for heat number one, pardon me, Amanda Hardman is in lane four, and she is one of the women vying for the invite here to the CrossFit Games. Yeah, she kind of... She was in the driver's seat coming into the day. She let it slip to Vera, to Vera. And then right now, Fisagafi is just ahead of her. But she's a few points back. She can still kind of get back into that game's invite position with a strong finish here. Fisagafi right now is in fourth place overall with 274 points, and she would be the woman hanging on to that invite. And it is jammed packed behind her with women who are vying for that invite. Only 14 points separate fourth place Fisagafi from seventh place Vera Kuskalainen. So a lot of women vying, and uh, only 15 points separate fourth from eight. So Selena Poppert also in contention as well. So nothing has been decided yet. A lot of points still up for grabs here as we have three events left for the women, two events after this. And Hardeman really has to make a push here because she's in an earlier heat. She doesn't have the benefit of letting this, letting the other performances play out in front of her like an athlete in the last heat would have. So got to push here. The first heat is underway, and it's Vera Kuskalina, and she's in that green tank top and the long black pants. She had the invite going into the prior event and let that slip, and now it belongs to Fee Sagafi. But again, only 15 points separate fourth from eighth, and all those women are in contention for that invite. The top three in the point standings are Tia Toomey, Chrissy Aramo, O'Connell, and Danielle Brandon. They have all already qualified for the games. Keskalainen and Murillo making the turn at the same time, both wearing those green tops. And then it's Amanda Hardeman, who is in third. Bridget Erickson pushing Hardeman for third place. Keskalainen and Murillo, they are your leaders early in this first of four heats, the final event of the day for the individuals. Just two events remain after this. Sixty total scored repetitions in this event. Fifteen reps on each of the walking lunges. They'll get a rep for every ten feet they complete, and then thirty total reps on the sandbag cleans. Murillo and Keskalainen are your leaders here on the final fifty-foot walking lunge using fifty-pound dumbbells. It looks like Koskalainen is really struggling to keep those dumbbells up on her shoulders. You can see her hands placed towards the back heads of the dumbbell. You can see them starting to slide forward. Just a little bit of extra work that she's having to do to kind of get through these lunges. On the, on the flip side of that, Haley Murillo is having them fall off the backside. So both of these athletes struggling towards the final few steps. Murillo is done, as is Koskalainen, and they will start on their 30 sandbag cleans, 100 pounds on that sandbag, and they advance it closer to their dumbbells every 10 repetitions. Cheyenne Black is also on her cleans, as is Selena Poppert, who had that great performance in the prior event. Again, just 15 points separating Fisa Goffey, who currently has the invite, and eighth place Selena Poppert. We saw Koskalainen get a, a no rep there. She was towards the front of the heat. 
with Haley Murillo, two very different approaches to the sandbag. You can see Murillo on the right side of your screen, basically one fluid motion all the way up over the shoulder. Koskalainen doing another technique that we see where you almost kind of choke up. You lift it up into the seat pocket just a little bit and then open up the hip to explode it over. It's a little bit, a little bit safer in terms of, you know, taxing your body and saving a little bit of energy, but it's significantly slower. Haley Marillo is through 26 of the 60 scored repetitions at 45 reps. She'll move back to the dumbbells for one final lunge. Eight minute time cap here, so less than five to go before we hit that. Marillo now halfway through those 30 cleans. She's had 15 in the bag. Amanda Hardiman is next to her. She's in the black. As Murillo is almost done with her second set of 10. We're seeing kind of Hardiman do almost a hybrid of the two techniques that we saw just a second ago. Doing more of one fluid motion like Murillo was doing, but taking just a quick second on the transition up as the sandbag comes up to adjust her grip just to make sure she's choked up enough to get it up over her shoulder. Murillo continuing to lead here through 36 of the 60 scored repetitions. Cheyenne Black has moved into second as Kuskalainen, because of the time she's taking on that sandbag, has now fallen off the lead pace. Haley Murillo tied for 10th place coming into this event with 222 total points. So she is certainly not out of contention. 52 points back of Fief Sagafi. What she would need to kind of put herself back into striking range would be an event win here to close out the day. Because remember, we only have a couple more events left. So Murillo with one rep to go before she gets back to the walking lunge with those 50-pound dumbbells. And she is finished. So three minutes to go for her before we hit that eight-minute time cap, and she is the only woman who's getting set to start her final 150-foot walking lunge. I mean, that's impressive. As of right now, that's the fastest split back to the dumbbells of any athlete. Dylan Martin was 5'12". Kyle Bernier was 525. Haley Murillo really can do herself a favor with a top finish in this event. Again, she's on the outside looking in as far as the invite is concerned, but she is within striking distance. 222 total points. She's 52 back of Fisa Gaffey. Interesting to note, she tried to actually switch the, the dumbbells to resting squarely on her shoulders. She immediately switched them back. You saw her shake her head off like either that was uncomfortable or maybe that didn't feel good or maybe that just added a little tension where she didn't want it. She immediately moved them back to the back half of her body. Cheyenne Black and Amanda Hardiman are onto the dumbbells, as is Selena Poppert. But it's Haley Marilla who is way out in front. She's making the return trip here. And then one final trip down the floor for her. Middle of your screen in the green top. Less than a minute 40 to go before we hit the time cap. Interesting enough, you notice she has her knee sleeves flipped down. You know, she's getting a little bit of support from the knee sleeves, but I think she's really trying to protect against is she banging her knee into the ground that over time is A, really painful, and B, could kind of bruise up your legs for going forward. So she's basically doubled up on the knee sleeves on that portion because that's the point that makes contact with the ground. Give her a little bit of cushion for those reps. 50 feet remain for Haley Murillo. A minute, 10 seconds before we hit the eight minute time cap. Meanwhile, Vera Keskalainen has just started her walking lunge. She's on the left of your screen in the green. Keskalainen came in in seventh place overall with 260, 260 total points. She was 14 back of Fisa Gaffey. So Murillo, Really looking to now jump into that fight that's going on for the invite. And even though it looks like she's not going to catch Murillo, this is still a strong performance from Amanda Hardiman so far. With how many people failed to make the time cap. 
being able to chew up some real estate here on this last lunge will certainly give her some precious points on the leaderboard. So Marillo looks like she's going to make it. As she is now done with the lunge, she's got to get herself across the finish line. And Haley Marillo will set the early time to beat at 746.87 seconds. As only one woman completes this event inside the eight-minute time cap here in this first heat, and Haley Marillo with an impressive time, 746.87. That looks like it could be one of the top five scores when we're all said and done here. Mm -hmm. Very impressive to see her finish underneath the time cap. And really, it came down to the sandbags for her, where we saw a lot of other athletes start to struggle towards the back half of those sandbag reps. You can see her pulling up and over in one fluid motion, being really quick through those. And then she had a monstrous lead by the time, the time she got to the final lunge, and then she gets to hopefully walk away with another top strong finish to close out day number two. Results from heat number one, the first of four heats, Haley Murillo, 746.87 seconds. Amanda Hardiman was one rep shy of completing the event. Cheyenne Black will take third. Haley Marillo will now watch anxiously as she sees if her time will stand. And right now, she is with Rory McKernan. It's been quite a day for you, my friend. How, how are you feeling now that you've got all of these events out of the way for day two? I feel good. Um, it's moving day, so here I am, moving on up. <laughs> uh, Sean and Tommy are talking about it. I'm very impressed. How do you think the time that you just put up is going to hold up? I mean, I feel, you know, I'm in heat one, so kind of setting the bar. And you know, now I'll, the next heats have something to beat. So we'll see. All right, I'll let you. I held it. I'll let you get back to recovery, and we'll see you tomorrow. Congratulations. Thank you. So Haley Marillo with the top time with three heats remaining. One more look at event number five, powered by Advocare, 150 foot walking lunge. In the beginning and in the end, and in the middle, 30 sandbag cleans at 100 pounds, 50 pounds on the dumbbells on the walking lunge. And I think we saw the keys to this event, for at least from the first heat, pacing on the final 15 sandbags. Once you get to, into the back half of that, as fatigue starts to pour, and we saw a lot of athletes drop off their pacing there and not be able to finish under the time cap. Lane assignments for this second of four heats. Lane number four, Marie Pierre Bonneau, who had a pretty impressive performance in that chipper event that we watched earlier today. Yeah, had her best finish of the weekend so far, tied for seventh in that kind of grueling chipper. Kind of hanging just outside the peripheral. We haven't said her name much, but strong performance so far. She's in 13th, not too far out from the top 10, and hopefully closing strong. Just 20 years old. And she comes in with 216 points. Fisa Gaffey again with 274. She's the one who is in the lead for the race for that invite. Paige Powers also in this heat. She has been impressive so far. One of the youngest competitors in this competition. Second of four heats underway. Haley Marillo with the top time so far, 746.87 seconds. And like you said just a second ago, Paige Power, she's been on a tear today. Fifth and a fourth place finish on day number two. Really the only thing that's holding her back from that top 10 is a really tough performance. 26th and 27th on the first two events yesterday on that long ruck run. So that's really the only thing that's keeping her out of the conversation as far as uh, invite is concerned. And Paige Power is on the right of your screen in the green. 17th overall, she's been creeping up the leaderboard today. 186 total points. She still has some work to do though. Needs a strong performance here to get within striking distance of maybe earning that invite to the CrossFit Games. Rebecca Fuselier in lane eight, far end of the floor, is in the lead. And Nikki Matarazzo in lane number three. She is in the green top, now in the middle of your screen. She towards the front as well. And Marie Pierre Bono and Sarah Beats trying to keep the pressure on Fuselier, who's working her way back down the floor, final 50 feet for her before she gets to the sandbag. And Fuselier, another young, talented athlete, like we've said in the past, a couple of games appearances in the teenage division underneath her belt. 
one of the kind of up and comers, maybe the next generation of games athletes that we're seeing emerging here on the women's side. And what's great about some of these younger athletes, I mean, they've been doing this stuff since they were you know, eight, nine, ten years old. And that's and that kind of contributes in a variety of ways, right? A lot of these movement patterns are kind of second nature, whereas a lot of these athletes spend a lot of time kind of nailing down their movement pattern and then building strength, building capacity. I mean, think about all of the development that goes in while you're young playing sports and developing the skills. If those skills that you're learning are just inherent at part of this CrossFit methodology, out, just outside of the sport, you're setting yourself up well for a healthy lifestyle as well. Fuseli also going with the two different pairs of shoes on as she and Sarah Vietz battle for the top spot here in this heat. 60 scored repetitions in this event. I think that means we're old, Sean, if uh, the uh, fashion trends <laughs> fall outside of our understanding. I think I passed that point a long time ago. <laughs> Get you a pair. Paige Powers in the middle of your screen. She is on to the sandbag, 100 pounds on that sandbag. As Sarah Vietz and Rebecca Fuselier on opposite sides of Powers fighting for the lead. Hillary Steele now is starting to creep up as well. The Vietz is done with her first set of 10. She'll advance her sandbag. She's on the left side. And Hillary Steele on the left is putting the pressure on Vietz. Steele 16th place overall coming into this event with 190 total points, but Vietz now is at the halfway point, 15 down of these 30 reps towards the left of your screen in the long black pants. And Hillary Steele is next to her in the all black. Once again, one of the tallest athletes and one of the shortest athletes in the field right next to each other. He's making quick work of these uh, these sandbag, cl sandbag cleans. We saw Haiti Murillo do the similar, have similar success. She's one of the uh, taller athletes in the field as well. The Vietz towards the right, those long black pants, and the all black next to her is Hillary Steele. And I like the awareness there for Vietz to kind of basically incorporate the transition in her throw there, throwing it into the next section for her final 10. Steele, Matarazzo, and Vietz all have 10 sandbag cleans remaining. And that's Matarazzo closest to your, your screen. As we approach the five minute mark, there'll be three minutes to go before we hit the time cap. After that, just one woman has finished this event inside that allotted eight minutes. And it was Haley Marillo in the prior heat at 746.87 seconds. And Marillo was already onto the lunge at this point, although she did kind of struggle with that, with that final few sets of lunges there. So even if they're a little bit behind, maybe a little bit better performance on this 150 foot lunge could get them at least within earshot of Murillo's time. Matarazzo on the left has now four reps remaining. Vietz has two reps remaining. She's on the right. If Bono, left of center, has four reps remaining. And Hillary Steele is just about done with her set of 30. So Vietz is done, and she will pick up the dumbbells first. Hillary Steele right behind her. And you got to think just because of leg length here that Vietz is going to have the advantage. Yeah, at least at least step for step, we're going to have to see a higher turno turnover rate from Hillary Steele here. With two minutes to go before we hit the time cap, and it's Hillary Steele out front. But here comes Sarah Vietz. Not many advantages us taller people have in CrossFit, but as far as lever length goes, being able to chew up a little bit more distance in those lunges with our longer getaway sticks certainly does help. And Vietz has erased Steele's lead and moved herself into first place in this heat. 
One rep for every 10 feet. So 15 total reps, 60 total reps are scored in this event. So Veets will work her way back down, and she is still in the lead. And she's looking much stronger than Haley Murillo did at this point on these lunges. If she keeps this pace up, she might be able to catch that time. 7.46.87 seconds. That was Murillo's top time in the prior heat. And again, she's the only woman to finish this event so far inside the eight-minute time cap. Veets now with just 50 feet remaining. 50 seconds before we hit the time cap. I think she's going to catch Murillo's time. She's been much faster in the transitions. Notice she's not breaking from her pace in terms of her stride on each lunge step. Taking a quick breath at the top and then diving right into it. Now, Vietz needs a huge result here because she is in 15th place overall, 192 total points. So less than 30 to go, and Vietz is going to have a chance of setting a new top mark. 7.46 right now, and she's got six seconds to get herself across the finish line to beat that. And it's going to be close. Vietz doesn't look like she's going to make it. 7.47.28, so about a half second between Vietz and Marilla, but second place right now for Sarah Vietz, and that would be worth 95 points if it sticks. If that ends up being her final time, I think she actually snuck out Marilla by a second. I got 748.87 for Marilla. We'll check on that, because I had 746, so we'll have to check the official time for Murillo, Ooh. but we do know that it was 747.28 for Vietz. Once again, we saw control of this heat kind of taken during that middle portion of the sandbag cleans. Even though Vietz slowed down a little bit during her final 10, she really blasted that final 150 feet of lunging. She got there at the same time that Hillary Steuben finished well ahead of her. She's the second woman to finish underneath the time cap and a strong performance for her today. Here are your official results for the second heat in event five. Sarah Vietz, we're waiting to get confirmation on Haley Murillo's time, but 747.28, we do know it was extremely close between the two of them. So Murillo, according to the scoreboard that I am looking at, 746.87. So she's gonna hang on unofficially, we're gonna get official confirmation on that, but. 746.87, so about a half a second ahead of Sarah Vietz. So the top time still belongs to Haley Murillo. One more look at event five, powered by Advocare. 150-foot walking lunge, followed by 30 sandbag cleans, and then a final 150-foot walking lunge. Being joined now by Rich Froning once again uh, in the booth. As he's donning the headset and grabbing the mic, how are you doing, sir? Just marvelous. That last one sucked. <laughs> <laughs> lane assignments here for the third heat, and Fee Sagafi is in lane seven, and right now she's the woman that is holding on to the invite to the CrossFit Games. Yeah, strong performance in that last event. Put her back in the driver's seat as far as the game's qualification goes. By far her best finish of the weekend, the second place, um, and right now she's in a good spot to go back for potentially her second trip to the CrossFit Games as an individual. Fee Sagafi is trying to hold off a handful of athletes right behind her. Just 14 points separate her in fourth place from seventh place. You program this. Why is this so terrible? It's just, it's one of those that's just kind of, there's not much skill to it other than uh, your only skill in this workout is to, how much can you suffer? Um, it's, it's the, the lunge is just not fun. And then trying to pick that sandbag up while you're out of breath, your legs are already gassed. Um, it's, it's just unpleasant, you know? It's been a long day, too, you know? So it's, uh, they've done, done some, some fitness this morning, and that just caps off the end of the day. A little aggressive on the time cap by myself here. So, uh, <laughs> I was thinking that when you only cleared that by 38 seconds, I, the, immediate, the immediate thought that I had was, man, this one's going to be a close for a lot of individuals. Yeah, yeah. No, I, this one, I, we tested. The, the idea came to me where, uh, before the, the games this year. We, we kind of, uh, it was one of those end-of-the-day workouts where you're like, need something a little sprintish, but, you know, it's good. So we went 100-foot lunge walk, 25 sandbag cleans, 100-foot lunge walk. And I was like, 
man, that would be a good event, but they need to like hurt a little bit more. And so I, let's add 50 feet on either end and five more cleans. So yeah, that was uh, my, <laughs> my bad. Add a little spice factor to it. Yeah, yeah. So it, um, you know, I honestly, when the girls, uh, when we train, the girls are so much faster lunging and the sandbag. Um, I thought they would have zero problem whatsoever finishing this. So, uh, but it's it's a it's a pretty devastating combo, really. Rich, a lot of sponsors have come on board for this event to help make this possible. Uh, and we talk a lot about the invite to the CrossFit Games, but winning this event, $15,000. That's yeah, an impressive uh, prize for us that you put together. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a good uh, three-day uh, payoff there, five grand a day if you can if you can pull it off. And, uh, yeah, I mean, without without Theragun, without Reebok, Advocare, Defiance Fuel, it, it wouldn't have happened. So, uh, you know, those guys came up big and, and helped out a ton. And then, I mean, we wouldn't have any equipment here. Or we'd be using our our slightly used rogue equipment without them. So they've been great. And uh, it's just uh, it's just cool to see everything come together. And I know you have a great relationship with Advocare. How do they help yep. you manage all the stress that you put on your body on a daily basis? Yeah, Advocare's, Advocare's been a, a great sponsor of mine, one of the longer running sponsors of mine. And, you know, they, they have great products. And it really, it's, it's what's kind of cool is I, I talk about how much the Advocare community mirrors the CrossFit community. Like, you go to these events, and those people are fired up about Advocare, and it's a, it's a real community. Uh, thing so it, it for me it fits hand in hand. Allison Stahl is the first woman done with her 150 foot walking lunge and now she is on to the 100 pound sandbag 30 reps to complete advancing every 10. And now Fee Sagafi is there as well she's got to stay towards the front here to not surrender too much ground in the race for that invite. Yeah this is a little you know this this first set of couple I, it really gets hard it's hard from the start, but uh, on the 10, you're like, all right, I, I need to move, but you don't want to go too fast that you're so gassed by the time you get to, you always know, like when you do grace, you do anything like that, 20 is when it kicks in and when it really, oh, really. really, 20 is when it kicks well, in. Really, <laughs> for, that must be nice. For myself, <laughs> and if you're in competition mode, you know, it's 20 is when it it's starts to get real, and so uh, you got to kind of think about that as you go, and then. I mean, you got to think about you have one more clean to clean up those dumbbells, but you have to compose yourself enough that, hey, I've got to hold these things into some time under tension for, you know, two minutes-ish, probably one, you know, the first one's a little bit shorter, but that second one, uh, your, your core's taxed because you've been holding these dumbbells, your core's taxed because um, you're picking up this sandbag. Oh, yeah, we did 100 GHDs this morning, so it's, uh, it's no small order to pick those dumbbells up and try to lunge them again. Allison Stahl is making quick work of the sandbag. She is already halfway through, through 18 reps. Interesting to note, she changed her technique uh, after the first 10. The first 10, kind of like Rich said, she was flying through. She just flipped them up and over in one fell swoop. The second 10, she's choosing to kind of wait at the hip a little bit, kind of choke up, and then finish the movement and pop it over. Yeah, there's two. I mean, you can do two different ways on these. It's uh, some of these are a little bit, they're newer. Um, the ones we use at the house are a little less full, I guess, because we've kind of packed them in and using different type of sand. You know, they'll fall almost perfect every time where it's for the guys, that, you know, this a little bit different shape with the 150 to the 100. But if they land perfect, it's good. But you got to train that, hey, when it lands on that awkward side, do you want to take that extra second to kind of roll it over and, and, and get my hands right or just pick it up? And that was something um, we were really... Uh, working on on that when we were doing it was that it wouldn't land exactly how you want it to land you know there's a comfortable way and a not so comfortable way so uh, just an added uh, layer to this workout so that might be what's going on right now I'm not really sure but she's still crushing it. Yeah, Allison Stahl only has two reps to go she came in in 11th place overall with 234 points she might get 100 right here I don't know the the next heat's pretty packed too but that's impressive. She's she's uh, moving at a nice little clip. And now back to the dumbbells. No hesitation. With three and a half minutes to go before we hit the time cap. Fee Sagafi currently sits in second. She's the closest to Stahl, but Stahl is demolishing this event. The Haley top time of 746.87 from Haley Marillo might be in danger here. And Haley was the fastest athlete, male or female, to this last set of dumbbells at 455. We just passed 455, and Allison's already a good, good Way chunk into that. that first set of 50 feet. That's impressive. We'll see if, have, if she has to put them down here. If she maybe rusted a little bit, but I don't know. 
I'm kind of I'm kind of sensing a trend here. So far, the three tallest women in each one of these heats has been blasted. I don't know if you intended that, Rich. No, I didn't. Trying to throw us tall athletes a bone here, hey, but you know, you know, we didn't have any uh, we didn't have any rowing, so it didn't really help you with any of that. So yeah, we we had to do a do a, a solid. Fair enough. Rowing or wall balls. <laughs> I don't know how I missed those two. Actually, it was a deadly combo. Allison Stahl trying to track down Haley Murillo's top time of 7.46.87 seconds. This is the third of four heats, so one heat remains after this, and Stahl trying to move herself up the overall leaderboard. Ninth place overall coming into the event with 234 points. She's only 40 back of Fee Sagafi, and she leads Sagafi right now, so that margin will shrink if this holds. Nope, here we go. She dropped him right here. We'll see what Sagafi can do here. Less than two minutes to go before we hit the time cap, and here comes Fee Sagafi. She's about 30 feet back. One thing you see with the girls, most of the girls let that the dumbbell kind of sit right there. I, for some reason, I can't. I'm just not comfortable there. I like them. I hate stacked. that. Stacked. I. Yep. It feels like my collarbones are just gonna get broken in half. So me being soft, I guess. But <laughs> I got a metal plate over my collarbone. Doesn't feel nice when I do that. So I stack them. Got, got a metal plate in my head. <laughs> if if I if I get a dent in it, my part's just not gonna look right. <laughs> <laughs> little Christmas vacation. Yeah, oh, you yeah. That? You like that? You're the real gourmet around here, Eddie. <laughs> yeah. Get yourself something real nice. <laughs> uh, Crushing it. I think Sagafi, though, made up some ground. Well, Stahl's done, and she is going to demolish Haley Marillo's top time as Alan Stahl gets in in seven minutes flat. Smashed it. That is going to be hard to beat, but of course, Tia Toomey, Christy Aramo, and Danielle Brandon are coming up in the final heat. But Yeah, I'd say Tia probably has her sights close to that, that time for sure. And huge result for Fee Sagafi because right now that's good for second place Helps in her. this event. She's trying to hold off a bunch of women behind her, and that's going to go a long way towards helping her do that. And even though Allison Stahl looking like she might get 100 points, you know, Fisa Gaffey only giving up five at this point is huge for her. She's still got a good enough cushion over an athlete like Stahl who's trying to make the climb. Stahl is only going to at most pick up five points. With Ten seconds to go now before we hit the time cap. But the two fastest times in this event have both come from this heat. Allison Stahl is seven minutes, point six one seconds, and then Fisa Gaffey, 21 seconds later. Someone might want to go down there and check Allison Stahl's sandbag because that did not look like 100 pounds. Moving it fast. Impressive. And once again, we see one of the taller athletes kind of take control, but this time Allison Stahl, I mean, no hesitation whatsoever. I guess she forgot about what her last name sounds like. No stalling whatsoever on the on the sandbag. See what you did there. Yeah, she even though she had to take a break on that last lunch set, I mean she had enough wiggle room that she still blew away the top time by nearly a minute. Impressive. Top times all from this heat. Allison Stahl with an amazing effort at seven minutes point six one seconds. Then Fee Sagafi doing her best to hang on to that invite to the CrossFit Games. Seven minutes point two one seconds is now four women have completed this event inside the eight minute time cap. Let's go down to Rory McCurden who is with Allison Stahl. Allison, you just gave me a little insight into your, your internal dialogue. Share that with everyone. What were you telling yourself? I knew it was gonna hurt and I was like, the worst it can just be is eight minutes of just grunt work, just go. And so I was like, I'm just gonna give what I got and just keep going. I feel like I'm not the most skilled athlete, but if it's just a workout where it's just go and in heart, then I'm all about it. So, so yeah. And how about with the odd objects? Do you spend a lot of time with those? Oh, uh, yeah, decent amount. I like the 150 sandbag. I try to do what I can, yeah. So I like odd objects. I just grunt work, so. And uh, two days in, how much fun are you having here at the Mayhem Classic? So much fun. So this gym is amazing. The volunteers are amazing. This place is so special, and you can really feel it. So thank you to all the volunteers. This would not be possible without you, and I truly mean that. It's an honor to get to be here, so. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Allison Stahl. 
So Alice has saw with the top time. That's event five. That's going to make you feel good when you hear an athlete yeah, say that she's having yeah, a good time I, and thank I, everybody here. I like Allison Stahl. She's a good good dude. <laughs> <laughs> so just two movements. Here's the walking lunge and the sandbag cleans. 50 pounds on the dumbbells for the women and then 100 pounds on that sandbag, although it remains to be seen whether or not Allison Stahl was doing the full 100 pounds. <laughs> I have a feeling she was. She was just demolishing that. It was awesome. Impressive. Six women in this fourth and final heat, the final heat of the day of competition. And Becca Voigt Miller in lane three is one of the athletes who's in that clump there that's chasing Fisa Goffey. She is very much alive for an invite to the CrossFit Games. You know, Becca Voigt Miller, you'd want her on your zombie apocalypse team because she's hard to kill. Still just hanging around. She's about 13 points back from Fisa Goffey, who had a strong finish. She's going to need another top five, top ten to make sure that she stays within striking distance going into the final day. Becca Voigt may be one of my favorite people on the planet, actually. She's pretty awesome. You know, she was our coach, um, you know, when was that? At the Invitational a couple years ago, competed with her. Incredible. Just just kind of what the whole CrossFit community embodies. That's that's Becca. She's she's awesome. 39 years old and hanging with Doesn't the Doesn't look like here. it. Doesn't act like it. So, incredible. Broke, she broke both of her wrists last year? Or one of them, I believe. One of them? Yeah, and like just... They still, had to re-break it too. Just a savage, you know, like, like you said, hard to kill. Just somebody you want, you somebody you want on your team, always. And one of those athletes, and I know you've encountered people like this before, where you get them in this setting where it's, it's competitive, and all of a sudden the just fitness just increases. Completely different person. That's you know, and, and we always talk about, hey, you've got, you know, you've got gamers and you got practice players, and and those are the people you want. Is and that's kind of what we've. We have at Mayhem and, and, you know, on our teams over the years is, like, people that shine bright in those, you know, like our girls right now and Scott, of course, but our girls, like, we've been to battle a bunch and just those girls just flip some type of switch and are just, in a good way, just nasty. You know? How do you know an athlete has that when you, you – how do you know it when you see it? You can just tell. I mean, it's, it's hard to kind of, like, quantify, I guess, but you can just – you can just tell, you know, like some people just handle the pressure. Like there may be some pressure, and you know, going on, and you, you're talking, and um, but just when when that buzzer goes off or three, two, one, go happens, whatever we're using at that time, it just that people go to a different place, and you can you can just tell. It's hard to like you can't pinpoint one thing to look for. It's just like some people are competitors, and some people aren't. You know, like that's that's what separates. Like there's people that probably are physically more you know capable or but they just mentally is just not there and so that's what you that's a huge separator so well, Tia Toomey and Danielle Brandon the first two women to that 100 pound sandbag and once again these two neck and neck uh, in an event you've gotten to spend a lot of time around now uh, Tia Toomey she's got that nasty. what other yeah, than obviously the fitness what right, just separates yeah, yeah. her from all the other competitors she's a competitor you know it's just something that people are born with and some people aren't you know like she hates to lose no matter what it is, no matter what the event is, male, female, anything, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's impressive. And those are the type of people that, you know, you just, you know, not that other people are bad, but those are the type of people I like to hang out with, those are people that I want to surround myself with. And um, it's, it's, it's just incredible to have people like that around and, and uh, to share the, share the competition floor with or even just, you know, training with every, from time to time. So it's, it's one of the, awesome. One, one of those intangibles where you almost kind of, yeah, you hate to lose more than you like to win. Yep, that's, that's it. Amen to that. That's it. The Tia Toomey is in the lead. She is through 30 of the 60 scored repetitions, and she is halfway through, now more than halfway through those 30 sandbag cleans. Danielle Brandon sits in second, and it's Alexis Detroit who sits in third. Moving it pretty well, like we thought. Less than five minutes to go before we hit that eight minute time cap. And we're right now surrounded by a whole lot of fitness. We have Rich Froning here in the booth with us and right behind us cheering for Tia Toomey is Matt Fraser. Toomey on her final set of 10. I'm not sure where Allison Stahl was at this point, but I have a sneaky feeling that it, it's gonna be close here. So she finished her final set of 10 right around the four minute mark which looks like Tia's, Tia's right on pace to kind of match. This is where you can see where Allison put the dumbbells down for that one set yeah. in that final. That could be the difference here. I don't feel like Tia's going to put those down if I had to guess. <laughs> you know, judging by past experience and past performance, I feel like uh, 150 is going to be unbroken here. Yeah. 
Tia Toomey is done inside four minutes. She has half the event to go to complete that final 150-foot walking lunge. The time to beat is up there. Allison Stahl, seven minutes, point six one seconds, and that is very well within the reach of Tia Toomey. Danielle Brandon is in second place, and she has yet to finish her final set of 10 sandbag cleans. And she just took a look at Tia Toomey, who is quickly lunging away from her. She gone. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of, you know, the, the dumbbell trick here, especially when you have them stacked like that, you have to make sure they're in that right spot. And, you know, we, we heard you talking earlier, and some of the athletes took a split second, and those were the ones that kind of went unbroken versus the guys that were like, oh, I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to jump on this. 150 feet's a long time, like we were saying, time under tension. So you got to make sure that you're right, make sure everything's set, because in your head you got to think, hey, I'm not putting these suckers down. Like, as much as I want to, you can always, well, most of the time, you can take one more lunge step. Yeah. <laughs> most of the time. And, and it's almost like you don't want to sow the seeds of discontent there. Like, yeah. if you put it in your head that I might need a break, right. more than likely yep. when you got to get into the pain cave a little bit, it's going to start to snowball a little bit. For sure. See it right here moving pretty well. Final 15 feet for her. And then one last trip down the floor. So it's Tia Toomey as everybody else right now. Danielle Brandon is in second place in this heat, but Toomey looking to lock up her fourth event win in five tries here. Well, she's putting him down. I thought that was going to be our separator right there, but and like the you same, said. Same transition where Stahl put him down as well. Seven minutes, .61 seconds. That's Allison Stahl's top time. And meanwhile, Becca Voigt still has yet to complete her sandbag cleans. So she's looking to possibly fall out of contention here for that invite. It's gonna be close, but I think Tia's got enough here. Oh, she's starting that walk through there too. You see that finish line? Yeah. Try to cut out some of those steps and then you think, oh, I can walk through. Nope, going back to the old stop at the top here. But Danielle Brandon is done with 100 feet. She has 50 feet remaining. She currently sits in second place in this heat. Toomey inching closer to that line that she needs to cross. She is done, and Tia Toomey is going to win yet another event here at the Mayhem Classic with plenty of room to spare. 638.75, she goes sub-7 and smashes Allison Stahl's prior time of seven minutes. Four event wins, five events. It's not too shabby. The only, the only, I guess you, it's, it's blemish. Weird to, yeah, it's weird <laughs> just to call it a blemish, you know. Second place. Is, is Nobody likes that. In a handstand walk workout to the person that won the handstand walk event at the games. Yeah, well, you know. Danielle Brandon is going to come across. This looks like it's going to be good enough for third place in the event. So 90 points for Danielle Brandon. For Danielle, this is a nice boost. She's been kind of chasing Chrissy Irma O'Connell the entire time. This might move her up move as her far up, as yeah. the podium is concerned. Yeah, Christy just now finishing, so maybe get a couple points there. Not a ton, but a few. So Irma is across the finish line. Becca Voigt, meanwhile, has the dumbbells on her shoulders. And I believe that this is going to be her final trip down the floor. So if Becca can step on the gas here, she only has 10 seconds to go. Now it's about getting as many reps as she possibly can in the bag. To get past those solid lines. So she got one right there. Not going to make that next one. Final up. seconds stick away. So Becca Voigt will not finish the event. She was only 20 feet shy. We'll have to see what that means for her as far as that race for the invite is concerned. But Tia Toomey, five events, doing four Tia wins, things. and a second place finish in the event that she did not win. From the get-go, she was pretty much at the front. You know, once again, she's been pretty much front-running alongside Dan Danielle Brandon the entire competition. Um, only this time, as we got to the back half, she really didn't look back. She took a quick break during that final lunch step, but she had enough cushion on her side that it really didn't matter. She still beat Allison Stahl's best time by over 30 seconds. She walks away with her fourth event win of the weekend. Six minutes. 38.75 seconds. That overshadows a great performance from Danielle Brandon, who will take second place 
for third place, make that in the event and lock up 90 points, helping her cause to get onto the podium. And Kristen Aramo O'Connell will finish in third in that heat. Let's send it down to Rory McKernan, who is with Tia Toomey. Tia, these events were released, most of them, uh, a couple days ago. I want to know what you did in preparation. Did you practice? Uh, the first one, the one with the um, dumbbell squat snatches and the handstand walk, we practiced that because that, I think, got released on Wednesday. But other than that, I haven't touched any of the other workouts. I kind of knew, all right, this one, your back was going to wind up, but you also had your glutes and, uh, and legs to worry about as well. So it, it all delivered, that's for sure. Well, we're at the end of two days. Earlier today, you said it was great to be here with your Cookville family. What about those people back in Australia? You got any messages for people back home? Uh, yeah, I mean, thank you so much for all the messages of good luck and that you're thinking of me and you're watching me. I love you all and you all know who you are. Um, but also, a big shout out to everyone that's been affected and also been volunteering their time for all the bushfires back home in Australia. It's a really hard time for a lot of people. and. Obviously, any donation is much appreciated to a vast variety. There's so many GoFund um, links. Go to my Instagram, you'll see a lot of them for donation. But thank you so much for those who have already supported the cause. And um, I just hope that, you know, we're Aussies. We'll get back from this. Tremendous message and a tremendous performance for you. Thank you so much. Tia Claire Toomey, ladies and gentlemen. Tia Toomey in four of five events, pardon me, has four wins in the second place finish. So as Rich said, doing Tia things right now. Rich, thanks so much for joining yeah, us, man. And we appreciate you having us out for this event. And you guys have put on a, a great competition so far. It's been really enjoyable. We appreciate the, uh, you guys coming out and, and bring, broadcasting it to the world and, and being the voice for it. Thank you, guys. Happy to be here. It's our pleasure. We're going to step aside for a few minutes, get reset, and get ready for our Theragun post show where we wrap up the entire day of competition. So stick around. We'll be back here in Cookville, Tennessee, the Mayhem Classic. <laughs>